Grand final time! Another best of three. Yeah, by the way, qualifiers obviously, that's why we have best of threes. Some people in uh, comments, especially on YouTube, were a bit surprised when they heard about some of the games being best of ones in the qualifiers and only the later games being best of threes, not best of fives. These are open qualifiers, everybody. This would be a bit time consuming if we would make everything a best of three with a best of five final. That's reserved for playoffs. They're going to have plenty of best of fives. Now, again, if you're watching this on YouTube again in order to spread the word a little bit and help with the algorithm, you can always hit that like button if you enjoy the content. Would be appreciated. And of course, if you want to support the channel even further, there's a join button underneath your player for the channel membership. They can also use if you want to do that. Also appreciate it if you want to pull that off. But now we're heading into our grand final. We got Towers of Doom and the Hardos go up again. Team. Wah! So uh, it is party time again. Right now, I gotta say that I really hope that Gunners On is going to take a bit of time to also go for some scrims and really just say, you know, put the time in to get more in sync because the talent is definitely there and you could see that already against the Hardos. But it just seems that the team needs a bit more. It's a little bit weird to say experience with each other because these guys have been playing Heroes of the Storm for a long time and plenty of them have been in the same team for one period or another. But there is just a bit of communication that's maybe still missing a bit of a sink there. So just like shake that rust off and then we're going to have an absolutely incredible playoff. I can't wait for Donuts, Hardos wah, and uh, Gunners on to uh, make their plays there. And of course we have a couple of new contenders too. And I would love for Chili Mountain to fill those holes that were created when Wubi and Smexy left. It's not going to be easy to find good replacements for them. But their team still has so many good players. So I hope that Chili Mountain is going to participate in more qualifiers for the X Cup fall. But either way, we're jumping ahead of ourselves. Now we are in the grand final of the third qualifier. And of course, as I said, you want to have the points here, right? The first place gets 10 points for the leaderboard. Second place gets a seven. That's still a fair chunk. So even just reaching the grand final is already awesome. But of course, you want to set yourselves a little bit ahead here. And ooh, very early Anduin pick. Uh, yeah, Junkrat on the other side. If he pushes someone away, he can always come in with Anduin and get the target batting. The Haka can also go for his own and simply try and get the tongue connected. But yeah, we got towers. So very early Anduin. Gotta say. We'll see what, he go, what he's going to get out of that. The crazy Australian on the other side. And there's the old man. Deckard Kane and Ural. All right. I'm a fan of the Space Goat. Space Goat is always fun. Space Goat is really, really cool. But yeah, when Whoopi plays it, it's an absolutely one-man army. But just in general, a good URL in uh, the hands of a good player is just incredible. Super annoying, nearly impossible to kill. And can just push you around six days a Sunday. And you have Junkrat and URL now doing the job for the blue team. So that's definitely got to be an annoying one. Mayev hasn't been banned yet, by the way, so she's still up. In, instead of Mayev, they banned Carrigan. And I'm wondering if maybe we're going to see that Mayev on the side of the Hardos. They could pick that too. So, first we get the ban on, on Stitches. So, no Stitches for uh, the first game. But what are we getting for Bad Benny? And is there maybe a Mayev play for them? Because if not, then there's a chance that Ultralisk is going to go for my F here. That definitely exists. There's Lunara and Muradin. Alright, so Muradin with potential follow-ups from the Haka. Lunara in as well. Bambi gets played a lot recently. I mean, whew. Bambi is everywhere. Yeah. But... Give me that tank. Masquerade maybe even with Diablo. That would be the old school setup. Urel, Deckard Kane, and Diablo had the most insane win rate in HTC for such a long time. And we get Tracer and Tyrell instead. So Tyrell's shields to help Tracer out a bit. Plus on top of that, of course, Deckard Kane with the potions. The old man trying to get all of that done. Space go to create a little bit of space. And the attention away from Junkrat who's going to attempt to capitalize on all of this. But yep. And we got Nick as the last pick on the right side. Alrighty, come on, Nikki. 
What are we gonna get from him? Towers of Doom, first map in the best of three series. Let's get going. We get Abatha, yes! Abatha is in. Abatha de Haka, Abatha Muradin. Oh boy, I'm game. All right, Towers of Doom, everybody. We get an Abbey game. Let's go. This is gonna be good. Again, number one, grand final of qualifier number three, team wah, against the Hados. On the left side, Ultralisk on Junkrat. We got Masquerade on Terriel. Dino on Tracer, Dequaza on the Space Goat, and Iowa is playing Deckard Kane. On the right side of the map, it's Hazo Ops on Abatha. Oh yeah, we got the Slugger in the house. Hail to the king, baby. Oh yeah, the king is back. Bad Benny on Muradin. He's gonna get all of that juicy Abatha support. We got Lunara. Played by Nick Copenhagen on Dehaka, and Yazu is playing Anduin. Okay, I am totally up for an Abatha game. Finally, we have him. So yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty awesome. I'm really looking forward to that. Already, it's an oh yeah, it's it's pretty annoying by the way when you're going up against the Dehaka at the top lane and then you get some Abatha support. But Muradin later on would give him the axe and the Abatha slow can be such a pain in the ass and a real, real damage machine. I mean, we've seen Muradin, Dehaka, uh, sorry, Muradin, Abatha go up against three players and win the fight. So, yeah. And Muradin is already roaming around a little bit. Bad Benny is moving in here with the Candy King, Muradin. Probably the, in, in green, even. In green. Probably the worst combo of all in that game. Benny, how could you? My eyes! My eyes, seriously. Watching that is like, ugh. Ugh. Uh, this, this is, this is rough. Yeah, but again, teams are dancing around now that the objective is up. The first objective, which is to get the camps around the one minute mark. That's the first uh, item on the agenda normally. And with the help of Avatar, they are getting this one too, or are they? Because Masquerade is saying hello. And if he drops the Eldruins, yeah, and he does. He could try to sneak this away, and indeed they do. They're going for Nick. Oh dear. Oh dear. Lunara has to be careful, and Bambi, yeah, she got killed. No chance there. So Bambi is down. One kill to zero. And Team wah, opens this game up with a first blood and a steal on the pumpkins. So they take oh, both of the pumpkin camps and exploit the fact that without Abatha, you don't have an additional hit point bar in the first few fights. Now, Shielding Potion is also in. Uh, plus, in addition to that, we have no level 4 talents for the red team available yet, which means that the blue team can, without any problems, push through the bot lane a bit and exploit that small gap in XP. Yeah, finally, level 4 is ready, and that gives us the Reverberation! Okay, Reverberation is in, plus we got the Lurker strain. And Urel is getting some value at the top now, too. Abatha is, of course, able to soak at least some experience here, but still slightly annoying right now. And Dehaka making his way over towards the top to catch all of that and ensure that the wall is not taking too much damage here. That's how I like my slugger. Sneaky in the bush, ready to channel the altar using the global right there. Okay, so we got the first objective up and that's a triple altar phase. Abatha is already falling back a bit. Bad Benny, again, he wants his level 7, so that Abatha can help out even further. Slightly behind the experience, but not by too much. Top left, top right exchange is definitely going to happen. It's all about the fight at the bottom. And, oh, Nick is dead again. Yeah, that's the second kill now against Nick. Easy kills there. Deckard Kane is, by the way, the one who's locked it in. The old man tripping Lunara with a stick, and then they just hammer her down. And Yasuo's also in trouble. Anduin is dead, and I... Uh, whew, this is getting a little bit annoying for the red team, I suppose. They're losing two out of the three altars, and they are also losing a few heroes, which means that we now have the level 7 advantage a bit earlier for the blue team. So that's a good opening here for team. Wow. Mm, very good one. Locked and loaded is in. We got the Divine Steed, and they're even trying to go for Muradin here. Who needs this level 7? Give him the axe! Yeah. Still a talent that I would like... To, uh, I mean, Sulji needs that more so than he does, I think. But yeah, the Desperate Prayer. And at this point, you're desperately praying for some kills and a better mid-game, because that early game was shit. 
Give him the axes in. They need those slows in bed. Benny needs a bit of support. The dwarf is in trouble. And the dwarf is dead. The dwarf is down. And Lulnara, I mean, at least she's able to survive for now. Yeah, nice attempt by Ultra List to set a trap up here too, but that didn't work. And of course, we got our Abatha support on level 7, uh, repairing all of the damage, or attempting to repair of that damage that was done at the bot lane. So, yeah. And here we go. Four kills to zero. And they're trying to jump the back line again. Nick with Abatha support. Yeah. Shattering teeth as usual, but they are taking control. Now they have to start the comeback. With Abatha again, until you have level 10, team fights are always a little bit dicey. But they're getting some damage out against Dino there. Problem is that Bad Benny himself is also under pressure and had to retreat before they locked in the kill against Tracer. But they are going to wait for that level 10 because once they have it, it's much easier to take these team fights with Abatha being able to supply the copy. Right now, it's a big problem though that level 10 is already in the hands of team. And that might even lead... I mean, first of all, it's going to lead to the next uh, altar being taken for free. That's a freebie. All right there, that's a freebie. But maybe they can do a little bit more with it. That's the bigger question. If they, for example, have a chance to, I don't know, maybe move in and take... I don't think they can take another belt. So even open a wall up. Objectives, like camps up in a minute and a half. Yeah, there's very little to do right now. But Benny's even interrupting because he has the survivability. Jumps out. Hazel sitting in the middle. Always got to be careful that you don't pull damage like this too close to Abatha because he is a bit of a squishy boy. Easy kills. There we go. And up at the top, still our one. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, ho, ho, ho. That's a kill. Oh, yeah, baby. Copenhagen. A tongue like a homing missile. He saw Tracer and he went. And he immediately gets the connect and that's the end of her. So, yeah, Tracer thought, all right, I'm juking this out easy peasy, and nope, not today. Got the ultimate evolution now in, and also the Thornwood Vines, level 10 abilities on both sides now. But that was a really, really nice one, I like that. And there's very little, more, I mean, honestly, there's not a whole lot that is more satisfying than seeing a good Dehaka player that is able to connect with a very mobile assassin and just, like, gets the drag and then the kill. So, yeah, that was awesome. Either way, we got a bad Benny down here trying to turn into good Benny, but he gets body blocked and Anduin tries to save him. And now Anduin finds himself in trouble. So that's a kill. Yeah, mistakes were made over here. Nice sleeper setup. Can they kill bad Benny? No, they can't. But it's still the bell tower conversion here. They still got the bell tower back and that's what really matters. So as all is said and done, the Hardos take one of those bell towers back. And now we have four versus four bell towers again on the map. And a double altar spawning topside. There's still a lot of control for the blue team because they're still taking one pumpkin camp after another. And Ultralisk is already busy at the bottom. Bad Benny. Yeah, it's not really following up here. But for a second I thought that maybe since he was still on the mount he might try to go for a junk red. But of course if you dive in too deep the rotation is going to hit you hard. There's another jump out. Again, the mule in the back. And top left, top right. The channels are happening. Urel took this one too. Shots are now fired on both sides with one camp still up. And it's 23 points against 32. So they're slowly and steadily getting the damage in. They're getting the level 13 talents. For now, we get the law and order and the ancient blessings. You gotta trap them all. And, well... We got to get all the damage out too. 22,000 for Tracer. Top damage in the game at this point. Dainu. Mobile enough. Zips in. Zips out. Nick with a slight mistiming. Was Blossom Swell. Oh, that could have been uh, some easy damage on Dainu. And there were the level 13 talents. We finally have a bit of slow now too. And sustained. Bad Benny. Yes, the copy. They go for the double Unara play. The old man already with the sleeper set up. Dropping the old sanctification in the background. And there's a light bomb. And the drag connect against Junkrat. And that is a kill. Copenhagen playing out of his mind again. Great play from him. Good drag too. They take Junkrat down. And here comes Hazuobs with a copy of Lunara getting even more damage in. They're trying for the Storm Ball. Dino escapes it. But the Hardos are back to a business. Taking control of the game thanks to their experience lead. 
And thanks to Copenhagen and just absolutely beasting it on De Haka now several times, both of the kills that they got were prepped by him connecting a drag. So, great job. Five kills to two. Still a big advantage on the kill count for team. But that doesn't really help you when it comes to winning the game. One of the hardest lessons for a lot of the quick match players to learn. You don't win the game by getting kills, you win the game by taking your opponent's score down. That's a little bit more important. Bad Benny! Okay. Yeah, they get the damage, they poke them out, but they also are likely going to lose out on another altar. And we are now talking 19 points. 19 to 32, so careful. The red team is finally building some momentum here. But they are still pretty far behind in core points. And of course, they can be remedied in the late game. Uh, but for now, this seems to be a bit of a problem. Seems like we have... No, the Quasar is still in here. All right. He actually paused the game. I was expecting one of them to drop out. But Ultralisk is still ready. And I'm not quite sure what exactly the problem is. But gives us a bit of a chance to also talk about what's still going on here. So in the middle, we have Hazorb still with a full control here. And the important part is that now he has the Soma Transference. But once the 16 kicks in, that's where things will get real interesting. Because he has an additional slow that he can supply. And if he does that, then Bad Benny does more damage when he gives them the axe. So, of course, there are more slows available than only what Abatha could theoretically give them. Since we have Lunara in the game. But Bad Benny's damage is really annoying when supported by Abatha and the Symbiote is on him. Because what he can do is simply jump into the back line and really pressure, for example, Ultralisk on his Junkrat. So that's a few of the plays that they can technically pull off here. Same as, by the way, to an extent, at least true for the Haka. When he globals in, you all of a sudden have the Haka behind you plus Abatha Symbiote. And that is a pain in the butt. And, of course, plays like this one up at the top are also possible thanks to Abyssa. He can supply the Symbiote, and you can get real good damage in on a structure where you only had the Haka a second go. Oh, yes. And Dino, yeah, he is not happy. He would like to go a lot deeper in these fights, but at this point, he just doesn't have a chance to pull that off. Now, 15 and a half. Abatha, he's soaking a lot. You can see the experience lead here. The Haka is at 13,000, but Abatha is at 8.3. So, yeah. That allows them to easily now go for early level 16 and get that talent advantage. So, there's a huge lead now coming when it comes to just global soaking on the map and getting a lead over your opponent through experience and additional talents. Because at level 16 talent... That is already big. And again, what is Abyssal going to go for? Adrenaline boost is obviously another option, and that's what he chooses. So we get the Adrenaline boost. We don't get the synergy. They're relying on Lunara for the slows, mainly. Yeah, there's the attempted kill. And Masquerade is... Oh, sanking. Goes for the sanctification and will likely get out here. But that was a great attempt to drop him. They nearly killed the main tank. Both now on 16, both teams. That gives us the Horadric reforging and we got the heavy handed. Plus, for the old man, the Horadric staff. Triple altar phase, obviously. The slugger on the top right is going for the channel. Abatha. Yeah, sometimes you just have to do it yourself. And talking about that, Urel, is she going to try and jump in? Yes, Hazu. No, the slug. Ah, the slug is down. Abatha gets obliterated. Slapped around a bit. Tried to burrow out. Couldn't get interrupted. And now at the bottom of the map, they're wreaking havoc. And they're going for Nick. Lunara is dead. And that is the end of the Haka team. Wah, coming in with a big swing. And they're going to convert the bell tower over before they channel. That's going to put them down to 10 points. Urel is already back to business, making the play. But oh my god, that one hurt. Abyssa dying first, and then Lunara and Dehaka both getting killed. Yeah, that was a problem. And they're even trying to go for Yasu here. That nearly led to a, a kill on him too. But yeah, the five shots are getting fired. Masquerade is the one with the channel. Shots fired quite literally. Boom. 28 to 10. And now, of course, they can, with the control over the bot lane, still try and escort some of the pumpkins through. Bot lane control, as you all know, is the most important one. Two pumpkin camps travel through the bot lanes. So if you have both of the bell towers, you can try to get those shots connected with the core directly. And it will force a defense out of your opponent. Boss is still up on the map as a potential tool. But yes, it is... Oh, Dino? 
Yeah, Dino is honestly... He died only once. 48,000 damage. Considering how they're going for Dino whenever they have a chance, this is pretty respectable. The Abyssal Corby gets burned down very quickly. No value out of that. And Copenhagen is missing the drag. Yeah, things are not flowing as well for the Hardos anymore. And the experience lead, thanks to those kills, has of course now been claimed by the blue team. <laughs> Fucking Junkrat. Honestly, when it comes to those sound setups, Junkrat is one of the funniest. Maniac. Oh, Benny? Yeah, Junkrat is a little maniac on the left side, so they get another pumpkin camp. Then they're closing slowly in on level 20, and that's really where the uh, rubber hits the road, because then you have so many options of what to do. You can try to use that level 20 advantage for additional mercenary camps, for an objective, or for the boss. And we are slowly getting to a point where all of these things would threaten game, and the Hardos are, of course, going to try and prevent that from happening, but it could lead to them having to engage into a pretty bad fight without a level 20 talent. Now we're jumping ahead a bit here, but let's see what happens. Oh my god, what a blow up on Junkrat, but Anduin is dead too. Nice counter kill. Junkrat is gone, but Anduin is dead as well, and Copenhagen is dying. The Haka dead, the copy. Double Mirrodin, but they prevent Bad Benny from jumping out, and they kill him too. Once again, it's Urel with the interrupt. And guys, they want to end the game right here. The Quasa already going for the channel, and it's happening. The first five shots are fired. Boom, down to five, and guess what? Deckard Kane is ending the game with another channel. This is it, the lead in the series for Team Wah here at the grand final of the third qualifier for the X Cup for GG. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Battlefield of Eternity, map number two, and the blue team in the lead. Very solid performance on the final map. I'm a bit sad that Abathur didn't win because I love myself a slugger, but yeah, it was just too well coordinated from Team Wah. Wow. Very nice plays there towards the end too. The counter kills every single time the Junkrat got blown up, multiple interrupts on Murdin's jump from Burel, for example. So yeah, it was really well played. So... A well-deserved victory on the first map, but now we're heading into the second one. I mean, technically it could be the last in this series. If the blue team crowns themselves the champion of the third qualifier, locks those 10 points in. Of course, everybody wants to play, uh, participate in the playoffs, but that's 4,000 euros on the line. Yeah, and Uberak gets banned first, and we have also a Lucio ban here. <laughs> no more URL. Yeah, uh, we are back to the days where Urel is a consistent ban. Not only against Wubi, no. Wubi is not the only guy that can play Urel. There's a few others around too. De Quasa being one of them, apparently. Alright, but they need to... I actually have no idea what they're going to play here right now. I would have loved to see an Anubarak engage again, but generally speaking, the Battlefield of Eternity is always a good map for a lot of team fights. A ban on Dibble. I, Varian being played. Mirrodin and Varian are obviously two heroes that you can always use here. Yeah, they like that Junkrat. Both teams do. Okay, so Junkrat is in. They banned out Diablo. But we still have Mirrodin around for the Storm Bolts and for those quick jumps, for those lead in CC moves. Plus, we have Varian who can also be played very, very easily on this map, especially since Stukov is also up. So you could go for a Stukov combo. Liming and a Blaze. Okay. Not the bad starting to the draft by any means, but that leaves some very powerful options up for them. For the Hardos. And Stukov, yeah, he could easily be part of this. Stukov and Dehaka. Yeah, there we go. Stukov and Dehaka, Copenhagen again with the tongue. But what do they ban out now? Are they, for example, afraid of a Varian? If they themselves want to play Muradin, they could pick Muradin, ban Varian. He got still Garrosh up. Maybe you gotta be a little bit careful that your opponent doesn't log in the Zarya, but eh, not really. Okay. Mm. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, it's actually a really good point. With the frequency that Lunara is being picked lately, that is not a bad ban at all. 
And the Ana ban. No nano boosted Liming. Yeah, Liming is a little bit sad about it, but. Okay. Moment of truth. I'm particularly interested what tank they're gonna take now. What their game plan is. Give me a tank. Yeah, and they still need their support too. I mean, support's not really that difficult, there's still plenty. Anduin. And Jojo. Okay. Johanna for Masquerade. And we got uh, uh, Anduin too. That's a lot of protection that you have here. I mean, Jojo and Blaze have been played as a combo by the hardest in particular for a long time. It must have been one and a half years ago or so. Where they just played that over and over and over again. You got the blinds. You got a lot of stuns that you can use there. Lately, even more so. Damage with the Falling Sword. Especially once you're hitting 20. That cooldown reduction is just crazy. And, yep. Yeah, there's Cassia for Nick. Straight into the blind. And we get Garrosh. Okay. So, we got the blind on Jojo. We have Blaze there as well. Cassia and... Yeah. If the Haka gets a good drag, if Stukov is able to get the Lurking Arm connected, Garrosh obviously going to help with all of that. Let's find out how much damage Junkrat and Cassie can do here. But on Battlefield of Eternity, our final pick goes to Dino. And we need more damage. More damage. This is another Genji play. Nope, this time he goes for Vala. They need a bit more towards the Immortal. So he's not going for Genji. They played Li Ming and Genji a bit earlier for the double reset system. Now we're on Battlefield once again, but a different match, of course. The grand final, everybody. Map number two between Team Wah and the Hardos. All right, let's go. Team Wah against the Hardos. Wah, wah. Dequaza on Blaze, Iowa on Anduin. Yeah, we got Dainu on Vala. Ultralisk is playing Li Ming here with the Ether Walk on uh, the first level. Plus Masquerade on Jojo. On the right side of the map, it's Bad Benny on uh, Garrosh. We got Hazops on Junkrat. Copenhagen again on the Haka. Nick on Cassia. And Yazu, Gesundheit, on Stukov. All right. <laughs> yeah, immediately they move into the middle of the map. I mean, it's always amazing if you're just getting a quick flip on anybody and a quick early game kill. But, but Benny isn't running into anyone here. Now, on the, the left side, we have the arrow build for Dainu. That doesn't come as a surprise. On this map, of course, you can burn the Immortal down with Vala pretty much single-handedly. Chiangrid is having fun as usual. That's a good thing when you're crazy. Like, you're always having a good time. So, uh, in that case, you can only envy someone like Junkrat. I mean, he always, you know, always has a smile on his lips. He's always laughing. Have you ever seen a sad Junkrat? Like, I have So, yeah, he just wants some chaos, and he usually gets that. I mean, yeah, if, if, if Junkrat gets one thing, then it's, it's chaos, especially in Heroes of the Storm. Maybe more so in quick match than here in competitive play, but both of that. Oh, my God. Benny, does he survive? Yes, he does. I thought that was the first kill. Bad Benny turning into dead Benny. That seemed like a given. But nope. He gets saved. He gets the heal. Gets saved. And he is still fine. As the blue team is now making a play for the camp. Masquerade fighting it out at the front. Bad Benny again alive. Are you kidding me? What? They take the camp and he's still alive twice now. He was pretty much on minus five hit points. And he made it both times. Jeez. Yasuo has to calm down today. The amazing plays that we saw in the semi-final with some of the heroes he played there. Oriel comes to mind. Uh, just nuts, but now it's Stukov. That kid needs to take a chill pill. He's just popping off over here. Totally smurfing on them. Now, they take the camp and they're looking for the second one. But Benny... Uh, don't think they can get a kill here, but it's a bit of free stacking for Dino as he connects one of his arrows. Repeating arrows gonna help him a bit more with this. But yeah. It's kind of bonkers, honestly. I mean, Benny should have died twice. Unkillable. Absolutely unkillable. Yeah. Either way, there's a level 4 talent now kicking in. We got the Indomitable on uh, Garrosh for level 4. And. Ooh, good stuff. Yeah, that's a dead baller. <laughs> Copenhagen is just insane. Copenhagen is crazy. 
I mean, the only one that really comes to mind that lands tongs the way that he does is good old Sugar Daddy 69 in Heroes Lounge. But, yep, and Wubi maybe. But what Copenhagen has been doing with the Haka over the last couple of weeks is just absolutely nuts. I mean, again, the man is coming through with licks and kills against... I mean, against Tracer, and he solo killed Wubi in one of the earlier occasions. It's just like, excuse me? It's just crazy. But Benny again... I mean, ben Benny is just flirting with death at this point. He's just flirting with it. He's just sitting there as like, yeah. The great beyond. Let's figure out what's there. So, we got one kill to zero. A bit of a leading experience for the Hardos. Half level ahead. And of course, Dino is the one trying to fight back here with a repeating arrow and attempting to get that RNG in so that he can get those hits connected with the Immortal. They're pushing at the bot lane pretty nicely though, but Copenhagen is there again. I mean, who else? Obviously, it's Copenhagen. And here's the defense. Bad Benny. Yeah, that stun against Yasu did not hit. Uh-uh. And there's the drag, and of course, it connects extremely well. There's the follow-up, and Anduin is ruining the place. Copenhagen again getting attacked, but already dodging out on the stun. The jet propulsion not hitting anything here. If anything, it made it really difficult for the Quasa to survive. They could have turned it on him. He might have been able to lock the kill in. Taino is trying to solo the Immortal now, but... Oh, there's a kill against Li Ming too. So the Hardos are building up some momentum here. And they're chasing them even further. Looking for kill number two. Taino, He's in trouble. Nah, yeah, he's not. He gets out. Okay. Uh, yeah, they're gonna lock this one. First objective is theirs for sure. Two kills to zero. First objective has been taken now. That's pretty decent for them. If they can get maybe the 40er level, ah, the gap, it, the gap is just not big enough. I was honestly thinking if they can maintain the level seven and nice some experience to the blue team, they might have uh, the talent advantage in the initial push as well. But it shouldn't really happen given the circumstances. And yep, there it is, the extra talent for team. Wow. Going full oil spill on uh, Blaze. Greenpeace is not happy about it. The oil dispersal and the nano machine coding right here. Yeah. Greenpeace hates Blaze. They hate him. Yeah, launching a cancel campaign already is so like, what kind of example is this setting? We can't have a hero like this here. And Stukov is dead. That was a really good flank. So as far as defense goes, this is probably one of the best things that can happen to you. you flank in and you take your opponent's support down, which shuts down any attempt at aggression from the Hardos. Without the support, it's just not possible. So it's two kills to one, and the experience gap has pretty much been bridged. It's a slight advantage for the Hardos, but it's negligible. They didn't even lose the fountain. So it's good for them. But the entire gate is obviously down. You're always going to get something out of the Immortal here. And that's what happened to them. Uh, yeah, they go again for Jojo. Careful. <laughs> Anduin is just such a pest in these situations. Without him, there would have been quite a few heroes that would have died already. But this trade saved Jojo multiple times. And Bad Benny is looking for one flip after another. That guy has been going to the gym. He just wants to show off at this point. He wants to show off what all that training was really for, all right? So he's coming in, throws one after another. I have the suspicion, by the way, we never really un we never really figured out who launches the dwarf, right? Murden's dwarf launch never made sense. I mean, it is a dwarf launch. It's not a dwarf jump. So he's not jumping. He's getting launched. He's getting launched by something. I think he has a pocket garage somewhere. It's the only explanation that made sense. Murden has a pocket garage somewhere that he can just activate. Or one of those mines that Junkrat is carrying around all day long. But, yep, there's that. Chattering Teeth is still one of my favorite talents. <laughs> it's nothing that's more stupid in the game. I love it. If you can name anything that is more funny and more hilarious than Chattering Teeth, I mean, drop it. Let me know. But, there, no. That's just nothing. Chattering Teeth is too good. It's such a big meme, it's awesome. But yeah, so off we go. Decimate on level 10. And here comes the light bomb with a stun. And Bad Benny. <laughs> Not again. Not again. 13 points. And finally, there it is. Bad Benny got decimated. So Vala gets the kill. Ultralisk on Liming has to get out. 
and saves himself, but they finally got a kill. And they also got a lot of damage towards the Hardos Immortal. So blue team is bringing it back. Oh yeah. They're about to take the halftime show. Well, they already did. So off we go. Oh, Azu! <laughs> Masquerade wanted the kill there and couldn't get it, but Hazel is still in trouble. And they're even following it up with Copenhagen. And Vala might get the kill here for them. Yes, Dehaka is dead. The dinosaur is down, extinct once again. Yeah, and it is getting a bit dangerous here for the Hardos. So far they've done well in the game, but now in the second Immortal it seems like Team Rat is turning everything on its head. Three kills to two, big damage against the Immortal, and pretty much nothing has been done by the Hardos so far. They are full defense here. There's also a big double wave coming in at the bottom to threaten the fort a bit. The Quasa gets out, and there's tons of heals incoming. 18 stacks at this point for Dainu, and he gets a few more as he comes in with another repeating arrow. Riptire! They're looking for the big rip! But there's the bunker, the Quasa! The isolation, yeah, that's a bit optimistic. Copenhagen was very, very optimistic with this one. Now they're trying to bring it over, but the poke is happening and Ultralist locks in the Immortal for the team. And as long as nobody dies now, they're going to be totally fine. And, well, talking about nobody dying, it seems like Ultralist got other plans. <laughs> Dehaka and Garrosh move in and drop him quickly. Ah, good for them. That's going to make the defense a lot easier. Immortal is going to take a couple of seconds until he finally arrives at the top lane. But you can imagine how this fight would have looked with five people pushing. At the end of the day, we have them with a big shield on this bad boy. 50% still left. And the damage numbers for Vala, 22,000. Cassian, 25k. But let's go. Bot lane. Dehaka, he might get more out of that push than the blue team does. The fort is down. That's the first one to fall. I guess, to be fair, the one at the top is also going to get obliterated. Masquerade, though, is a bit low. Very, very low. Oh, got pushed out by Junkrat. Ah, what a jet propulsion here. But they just can't get the kill now against Garrosh, can they? It's amazing to me that Bad Benny has only died once in this game. It's absolutely amazing. And Anduin... Yeah, he's slightly confused. Anduin was looking for friends, and then he realized that nobody actually likes him. So he's in the middle of five people and all that they want to do is kick the shit out of him. And realization has sunk in pretty late and it was trying to get out but yeah. It wasn't happening anymore so Anduin is down and that's the fourth kill for the Hardos. They get level 13 in a second. But yep, both teams with the extra talents right now. And for, for our sunny boy it's obviously the level 16 that counts the most. Once that you have the double pull on your trade, yeah, it's crazy good. It's really good. By the way, we all know that Anduin was that guy in school that was bullied all day, every day. You know, he was like that kid that always came home with the A's, you know, never really wanted to do sports. It was just like super nice. Just pre like just painted a target on him. Yeah, complete bullseye on his face. Anduin was that guy. He comes in to, to school, you know, with that sweater that mommy made for him. <laughs> that was, by the way, me. <laughs> oh, God, good times. Yeah. You can't complain about being bullied when you do that. It's exactly what I did. <laughs> and I got my fair share of bullying, and in hindsight, I'm like, yeah, kind of. I was kind of given. What, what else did you expect? Things might have changed since then. But yeah, Anduin is definitely that guy. Imperius is the principal. We don't have him in here. He's that school principal, Imperius, you know? That broomstick up his ass. It's like striding through the battlefield. Andrew is the kid that got bullied. Garrosh is the one that bullies everybody. Throws them around. Stuffs them into lockers. We have a full high school here, honestly. Now that I think about it. Jaina is the prom queen. <laughs> like, the more I think about that stupid comparison, the more it fits, the more examples I have. Oh, what a blow up. They were done with Garrosh, weren't they? Oh my god, they absolutely crushed him. The blessed shield to the face and the insta kill right there. And they're trying to go another one. Yasu is down too. And yeah, that's a super important double kill, just as the immortal spawns. They get a third as well. Boys, it's a triple, baby. And at the bottom of the map, it leads to a fort that gets taken down. Top side, they can defend. 
Oh my god, yeah. This is... Yeah, this is getting a bit... Nasty. Vala could be that goth girl. No, Sylvanas is a goth girl. Sylvanas is a goth girl that is a little bit strange, but also strangely attractive. <laughs> we all had one of those. You can't tell me that you didn't have that chicken school somewhere. Oh my god. Heroes of the Storm is a high school, and I never knew. Junkrat is that crazy kid, you know, that one guy that is so crazy and nobody wants to be around him. Even the bullies leave him alone because it's just a little bit too weird. Never showers. <laughs> oh, that might be that might be Hogar. Like I don't know, but yeah, I'm a hundred percent sure that we have more examples of that. But I can't go through the entire hero pool here. So yeah, push at the bot lane. Two forts are already down. Team wah, is looking for the big wins here, of course. Sixty stacks for Cassia, I might add. But yep. They might get, even get the keep here. They have level 16s now. And that gives us the Glyph of Faith. That is such a good talent. If you make a 20 talent, a level 16 talent, I mean, damn. That power spike on a hero is just nuts. So, yeah, this keep is gone. There's absolutely nothing that they can do here. Yeah, that's that's the end of it. That's the end of the keep. They don't even have to fight for it. They can just simply retreat here. But they might just stick around to see if they can get a kill because that could technically be some damage on the core too. I don't think they can take the entire thing down, but yeah. Oh, there's the strafe. Hello, sir. Uh, light bomb. Dehaka and Garrosh. If they can focus on him. Yeah, but instead it's Masquerade that falls, isn't it? Yes, Masquerade is down. Bad Benny. Bad Benny. Alive again. And they Quasa is caught on the wrong side of the map. But the core is actually suffering a fair amount of damage. That's 30, 30%, 40% on the core that I got. Uh, make it 50. Hello. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Were the two kills worth it? I'm not so sure. I honestly don't know if the two kills that they just got were, were, were worth it at the end of the day. That's 54% of the hit points on the core gone. The flit. No. <laughs> Endwin. With a save once again. God. They got Kane, by the way, is that old teacher that has just been passed by time. You know, he's like, Oh, the computers. Does somebody know how the TV works? Why does the video not play? <laughs> now, back when I was in school, they just had those watches, you know, that you could remote control TVs with. And we literally set it up one day before the class started because we knew that we were supposed to watch a movie that one of the guys in our class just connected with the TV remote. And so every single time that the TV would turn on after two minutes, he would just turn the TV off. And he would pretty much just only turn it on if our teacher who was a little bit older, would move in front of the TV and, you know, would make like magic gestures in front of the TV. And then he would the TV, turn the TV on again. And she literally at some point called another teacher over and asked him for help. And he's like, I don't understand. It always turns off. But if I do this, zip, zip, then it turns on again. And I don't understand why. <laughs> Oh my god, and he of course figured it out pretty quickly, but it was just so fucking good. <laughs> oh god. Leo is the janitor, of course. And they got Kane, you know, he's the old guy that is like at class, and then you ask him, but I don't understand why we need this later in life, and that, you know, is the entire lesson gone. Like for like half an hour, it's just like I'm gonna try to explain to you why you should like stay in school and why you need this later. And it's the only strategy that you have to prolong this. God. The only strategy, by the way, that the Hardos have right now is to try and somehow YOLO into this 4v5 or no, because their core has suffered way too much damage. And they nearly get the kill on Masquerade, but no, instead it's Junkrat that dies. Junkrat is down, he's already gone, and boy, that is a disaster. Yeah, with Cassia also taken down, this is looking like the beginning of the end. Now, to be fair, there's a camp at the top that pushes for keep, so maybe they can get something out of that. But, yeah, it's a pretty crazy scenario now. Nine kills to six, and of course they're looking for the 2-0 victory here. But, yeah, this is the end of Yasu. And it's a staggered death, too. It's a 20-second gap between Cassia coming back and Stukov coming back. So, of course, now they just simply go for the win and straight for the core. They don't even bother with the Immortal anymore, and why would they? That is game! So yeah, nicely done. GG and well played. A 2-0 victory for Team Wah! after they only took third place in the second qualifier. They lock in a victory in qualifier number three. 
and congratulations, well deserved. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.